many things. Um, Is it a question? There is about three things. I was out last night. Can you hold it closer, oh. the mic? I was out last night and I wanted to buy something and I was immediately just put down and I just felt it and I felt it. I didn't react, I didn't say anything. And through that I went down in myself and so therefore I knew not to act or react. I just gathered my, my feelings up. And what I, because this is to do with my mother, what I can, because I n never blamed, well, not that I blamed, but I could never see a lot of learnings from mum. I could see them from dad. And what I got out of that message last night, how whenever I asked for something from mum, I was never respected. Like the incident last night, mm -hmm. I never got it. And I was growled at. So there is more things I know that I need to see inside. Now, can I stop you? Yeah. Because what you're doing right now is unloving. Who to? To all of the group. Oh. Can, well, I, can I, you I, see why? No. All right. Let yourself just feel about what, what were you doing? Um... Can you see you're telling a story? Yes. Why do you need to tell a story to the group? For acknowledgement. Okay. So you have a desire for their acknowledgement. Can you see that? Yes. Well, now, is that an unloving desire or a loving one? If I expect anything from anybody else, is it loving or unloving? N unloving. Unloving. Okay. So, so telling the story mm. is actually an unloving desire. Can you see that? It's okay to feel yes. about it. Yeah. Now, let's. Is there a question behind the story? Oh, okay. It probably is. No, no. Don't try to create one. At the beginning of all of this, was there a question behind the story? Can you see that there wasn't? Can you see there wasn't a question behind the story? I, because I've gone into fear. Yeah. And I'm <laughs> That's burning. okay. My body's burning inside, so I better finish. <laughs> well, no, no, it's all right. Now, you, now you're feeling ashamed. Okay, so just feel the shame. That's okay. Like, it's okay to feel the shame. What I wanted to point out to you is the desire to tell the story is actually imposing your story upon 100 or 200 people. Because I always get everything wrong. Yeah, but, but there's a point to it inside of yourself. Why do you want to tell the story? Probably because the consequences is, <coughs> no matter what I do or say, I get it wrong. Because it's yeah. just happened. That's, see, this is where we often tell ourselves furfies, right? That's not the real reason why you wanted to tell the story. For acknowledgement. That's more appropriate, isn't it? That's the reason why you're going for the story. If you, were one, if you had a question, that would be more loving. Because okay. it might be a question that 10 or 20 other people also have. Does that make sense? Yes. However... Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes when I tell my story, it can help other people. No. Actually, it's not when you tell your story that it helps other people. It's if the people have a desire to listen to your story and you tell them the story, then it helps other people. <laughs> can you see the difference? Say that last bit again. Uh, the only time your story is going to help another person is if, when that, if that person actually has a desire to hear it in the first place. And sometimes pennies can just drop for someone. So now you're justifying, imposing your story upon others with the potential hope that penny drops for them. Mm. Does that sound loving? <laughs> <laughs> How can you have a loving result from an unloving action? Well, I did not know it was not from an unloving I know, but position. can you see even in this interaction there's a tendency to justify the unloving action? And your justification of it is somebody else might benefit from the mm. story. Mm. Yeah. Whereas I feel somebody else would benefit more from the question that you would have if you had one. I get that yes. Yeah. And your desire to tell the story is a desire to hold, like to have not just me, 
which is, uh, many of you have the desire for me to hear the story, and I don't know why you want me to hear the story. Or Do if you, there's something for someone else to learn. Well, don't you feel that I'll be sensitive enough emotionally to feel the rest of the group and know what the group needs to learn? Can you see it's almost like a condescension towards myself? Well, sometimes uh, um, if I hear something told that way and I don't get it, yeah. um, then you'll say something else and yeah. it'll come from another angle and I'll get that one. And so you must feel that I don't, I'm not telling things from the right angle and you've got some angles that you want to add. <laughs> and that's okay. But why don't you create your own law of attraction with a group of 200 people to listen to you in under those circumstances? I know. Why don't you do that? I will. You, can, you see... You see <laughs> You not only will, you just have. <laughs> I'd better stop. <laughs> so what, what, I, what I'm trying to get across to you, though, is that often we have a desire for other people to listen to us that is stronger than our recognition of whether they want to listen to us or not. And this is why many times in interactions with people, you sometimes feel overburdened. You've noticed that in many of your interactions. Somebody comes up to you and they start talking to you and you're feeling like, oh, I just want to get away from this person. This person just feels like they're overbearing and they're, they're, they're wanting something from me. They're, they're giving me something, but really they want something. And what they want is for us to listen to them or approve of their story or whatever. And, and it will be actually under those circumstances, again, another choice. This is a gift God's giving us. It would be unloving for us to listen to them under those circumstances. Does that make sense? Because, and all we need to do is be sensitive to, and feel our emotion. What do we feel? We feel, oh, pressured. We feel overburdened. We feel pushed into a corner, whatever. There's only two reasons why we'd feel that. One is an, uh, an unloving emotion within us. And the other is that the other person's actually doing that to us. <laughs> Isn't it? And if it's the first, then we need to feel our own emotions. And if it's the second, we need to feel our own emotion. We need to feel our own emotion under both circumstances and respond truthfully in both circumstances. And, and so... The, one of the reasons, you've had your hand up uh, three times now, I, I think, before I actually asked you the question. And do you know why it took me tho that amount of time to actually ask oh, you? Oh, there'd be a reason. Because I can feel the emotion from you mm. of I wanting mean. everybody to listen to a story. And one of the reasons why you yell out in the group a bit mm. sometimes mm. is the same emotion. Wanting everyone to hear what your opinion is of what's being said. And that's a desire for, I have the same opinion as that. And I want everyone here to know that I have the same opinion. Does that Do make I sense? Have a, yeah. Do I say? You can say whatever you oh, wish because no, no, you've still no, got the know. microphone. <laughs> 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 but you've got to bear in mind that I'm going to probably address it. <laughs> well, okay, I'll go on. I have a burning desire inside mm -hmm. and it's, if I don't get it out, it's like a volcano. Yes, but, and this is something to, for many of us to bear in mind, many of our burning desires are quite self-absorbed and are not very responsible in terms of what's going on around us for many of us. A burning desire that's self-absorbed is not actually a burning desire, it's an addiction. And many of our addictions are driven by terror-based emotions. In other words, we can't but help ourselves do it, mm. right? And when you can't but help yourself do something, don't always assume that it's a passion it can often be an addiction because you think about it how many people can't but help themselves have a smoke or can't but help themselves have a drink when there's one available and can't but help themselves do anything it's all because of these big emotions that are addictions inside of us many times now the reason why i avoided asking you when you put your hand up like that <laughs> right out the back you're already standing and i can see <laughs> Right? And the reason why you're putting your hand up so much is because you do want this interaction, right? Mm. And you're standing up like that, putting your hand up and, go, and going like that. And then, and then I'm starting the talking and quite often I'm actually saying some things <laughs> that I need to finish. And you know that, but you still got this going up like that, like, like that, about a subject that even wasn't related to the discussion at this point. Because as yet, yeah. there has been no relationship to the discussion. Aside from my interaction with you mm. afterwards. Pardon? Aside from this interaction we're having now, which is related to the discussion. Because I feel that you neglect me. But I know, ah, I know. Spot that's on. Me. Spot, I, I do neglect you. Totally. Yes. And this is the point. I purposefully oh, neglect you. Smoke. Do you understand? 
I purposefully neglect to. And the reason why I purposefully do, because there, it, to, to actually engage you while you're demanding like that would be an unloving act on my behalf. Do you, do you follow me? And, and the only reason why I chose to engage you this time is because it was a part of the lesson that I was teaching that I wanted to get across to everyone else. Do you follow me? But I don't really like doing what I'm doing. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> why? Well, half I do because I need to get it out in the open. Yeah, but why? Can you see it's all to do with this emotion of being recognised, having what I feel validated by others and so forth? Can you see it's an addiction? Yes. Yeah, that's why. That's why it feels such like it's such a uh, something that you've mm. got to do. You know? mm. yeah. yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. And there's another person in the audience doing it right now as well. Thank you. I know. <laughs> Which I shall also ask. <laughs> 